Moving on to other stories now, the controversy surrounding the introduction of genetically modified organisms into Nigeria is yet to die down, but the federal government says that it is assuring the people there is no cause for worry. The Director General of the National Biosafety Management Agency, Mr. Rufus Ebeba, says that government will protect the public against harmful effects of genetically modified food. He told journalists at a forum in Abuja that though the technology has its pitfalls, if not properly supervised, it remains the sure way to provide food production for Nigeria's growing population. One year after the Nigeria Biosafety Bill was signed into law, the issue of whether or not to adopt genetically modified organisms has continued to generate heated debate. In spite of the controversy, some have rejected the technology, raising concern about its health implications. We strongly object to the release of genetically modified organisms, or rather called GMOs, in Nigeria. Notwithstanding, government officials at this forum in Abuja insist that the practice is safe as it will be properly regulated. Nigeria as a country has adopted this technology directly or indirectly. The establishment of the agency to ensure that it's well practiced, the establishment of an agency to ensure that it's promoted, the establishment of research institutes and universities and some other concerns attestation to the fact that Nigeria has taken the right path. Others argue that the regulators also must be accountable to ensure the safety of this practice. As much as we have a regulator, we need to ensure that that regulator, which is funded by taxpayers' money, is accountable to what happens when they implement the advent of GMO in our society. Although several countries in the world, including China and the United States, have adopted GMO, Austria, Bulgaria, Italy and a host of others have refused the technology, raising concern for its health implications. And to some, that will be the activities of vandals in the nation's capital are giving the authorities of the Federal Capital Territory Administration a cause for worry. Findings reveal that the FCT may be losing millions of naira to the phenomenon. The main target of the vandals is the city's traffic light and accessories. Our correspondent Ibrahim Adra reports. The occasion is a North Central Leaders Congress of the Nigeria Union of Journalists, hosted by NUJ Abuja Chapter. The FCT minister, a special guest, is pouring out his heart over an issue that is eating deep into the resources of his administration. The rate of vandalization of public assets and property in this city is amazing. For instance, traffic lights are being vandalized. Street lights are being vandalized. Cables are being vandalized. Worst hit is the traffic lights. A tour around some parts of Africa's fastest growing city reveals the extent of vandalism. We have records. More than 40 uh, traffic junctions have been vandalized. The facilities vandalized are mainly the batteries. They will hit the battery first, and once they hit the battery, the other ones are off. In some other places, you could see that uh, they will go up and remove the, 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 the traffic uh, uh, panel itself, so that there will be no, no signal at those junctions. Hundreds of thousands of vehicles come into the city of Abuja daily. Non-functional traffic lights add to the frustration of drivers, leading to accidents. And those are frequent on Abuja's well-planned highways. This control panel that has been so vandalized, with the batteries taking away a situation that is causing the FCT a sleepless night, is just a stone throw from the Minister of Finance right here in the central business district of Abuja. There are so many other buildings around here, so you expect some level of security here. But somehow, the vandals got away with their sabotage. The FCT urges Abuja residents to be vigilant. We have reported by the law enforcement agents to help us apprehend the, those who are behind this dastardly act. The administration will be happy to apprehend the culprit. For now, it has to spend scarce funds to fix panel boxes and lights to ease free flow of traffic. Ibrahim Adra, Channels Television News. Well, fewer than 300 houses in some parts of Kaduna State, northwest of Nigeria, 
have been taken over by floods following the heavy rainfall that lasted for several hours. More than 10,000 people have also been forced out of their homes as a result of the incident. Kaduna is one of the 11 states predicted by the Nigeria Meteorological Agency to experience flooding due to cumulative high-intensity rainfall. Flooding has become an annual occurrence in most parts of Kaduna State during the rainy season. This is in spite of several warnings by the National Emergency Management Agency asking people living near riverbanks and flood-prone areas to vacate those places. Last month, NEMA issued an alert that eight local governments in the state were likely to experience flooding and warned residents of the affected areas to vacate to safer places. The agency blames the latest flooding to blockage of drainages with refuse and people building along water channels. However, the residents have refused to comply with NEMA's directive. They claim they do not have funds to secure accommodation elsewhere. These residents are instead asking the government to construct drainages along the waterfront. The way people build houses these days, most especially those who are far back to our side, there is no enough drainage. The drainage is just like a narrow, it cannot contain what is supposed to contain if there is a heavy rain. I just my, I'm looking my God because I don't get power to go to say I want forward. Even the person where he collect my money before he give me the, the, the house. Not I can do, but I just I just look my own God. Because as my power I know is to build my own and I get money to hire the house and I don't know say this is how the area be before I hire the house. A trip through the streets revealed the level of damage. Properties have been destroyed. Elsewhere, residents try to salvage whatever they can. Our call has always been, uh, once it has come to this uh, matter, is for all those communities that are living along uh, the river Rhine parts of the, the state in these uh, local governments to, as quickly as possible, start the process of evacuating themselves and properties from those areas and move to safer grounds. In 2012, seven people died as a result of flood, while several houses and farmland were destroyed. Since then, the State Emergency Management Agency, SEMA, has set up an early warning system to monitor the situation. While well, those floods have indeed ravaged areas in Kaduna State, the Lagos State Government says it is intensifying efforts to ensure free flow of water in all drains and canals in order to contain and control flooding ahead of heavy rains, as predicted by the Nigeria Meteorological Agency. Officials from the Ministry of Environment today embarked on an assessment of canals and drains to find solutions to flooding in areas prone to it. For hours, officials of the Lagos State Ministry of the Environment inspected water channels in Odiolowo Council Development Area, one of the flood-prone areas in the state. Most of the drains here are blocked by refuse dumped by residents. Others are not wide enough to contain the amount of water coming into them. Bada is one of the streets badly affected by flooding. The channeling of drainage from the railway line through the street is obviously too small to contain the amount of water coming from other parts of the state. As a result, the street is littered with waste from the flood whenever it rains, causing so much discomfort for residents. If you can see their drainage, it was stopped and blocked and making a very huge diversion into that street. For, for, for years, you have had a very bad experience. Even a, a two years old boy was flooded away. Most of the times we have issues. All these things come outside and at the same time they go to the main road, they spoil the roads and every down thing, they block all the gutter and every down thing. But since you people have come around to see what we are facing, we are very, very happy. If you move from here now, as we are coming, you will see the, the drainage that is open is going, is at a point it was blocked. People built on the on, on, on the drainage line. And after that building, about two or three or four buildings, if you go forward again, you will see that the drainage is also open again. So those blockage may be contributing factor to the problem of this area. The team also inspected blocked canals as well as primary and secondary drainages within the area. 
This exercise became necessary following forecasts of heavy rains in coastal states across the country, including Lagos. Before now, we've started clearing our drainages. If you look at, if you monitor it very well, and we are still on it. We are going to continue until even next year. We are going to be doing it around the year. Not that we are having a particular time now. Our technical uh, people will visit this local government again on Monday, and they will look at everywhere that we have this black spot, and they will report back to us and we will swing into action. While the state government promises to do its part by clearing these channels, it however warned residents of sabotaging this effort through indiscriminate dumping of refuse in waterways. Still ahead on the news at 10, investors maintain a cautious outlook at Nigeria's equities market after a bearish week leading to a 0.72% drop in the key index. Join us again.